ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear professors, uh, conference uh, organizers, uh, and uh, students. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here and to speak in front of you. Uh, so, uh, today I would like to talk about such important topic like globalization, management, and uh, how we approach these um, new challenges uh, which arise uh, on everyday uh, basis in our business life. Uh, so, uh, we know that management is not only uh, a pool of knowledge that we have, it's uh, rather an art. Uh, and uh, we, also, uh, we always need to uh, keep in touch what is going on in the uh, international environment. Uh, so, uh, now we live in 21st century and it's an era of globalization where the world is become flatter. Organizations become flatter. There is no boundaries anymore. And uh, for any country, it's a big challenge how to grow and how to develop. Uh, there is a notion that uh, organization has only two main functions. They are marketing and innovation. And uh, not even like uh, planning, not even starting, but they are uh, really important. But marketing and innovations, let me explain why. Innovations create value to the customer, and marketing tries to deliver that value to the customer, communicate properly. And if organization fails uh, to meet customer requirements, it will never succeed in a business. That is why I want to talk about innovations. How companies uh, compete based on their innovations? Because nowadays, uh, price and non-price competition is not so important. It's important what you deliver to the customer, if customer is satisfied with your products. So, um, India uh, started its globalization pathways in the early 90s. And now it uh, has uh, a lot of trade and investment with many countries. Uh, but um, what is the ranking of India in global indexes? So, uh, Global Competitiveness Report acknowledges India as a prospective center of innovations. India has improved its competitive position by making substantial progress in market regulation, infrastructure development, education, and institutional framework. Uh, Unfortunately, technological process, progress is mostly defined by uh, government, but their uh, budgets. Around 55% of all R&D funds contributed by government for military and fuel supply purposes. India is proud of its weapon, nuclear and space deployments. Such products as missiles, rocket systems, night vision devices, reactors, satellites, and launch vehicles are recognized to be competitive by many customers inside and abroad. India enjoys one of the largest space budgets among G20 countries, allocating more than 1 billion US dollars. Country benefits heavily from exporting the majority of space technology products. High educational establishments finance only 4% of all research activities. And private business, 38%, driven by pharmaceutical and automobile industry. India also demonstrates growing scientific output in terms of scopus publications and growing patent filing activity. Uh, as we talk a little bit more about companies, so firms in India introduce cost-cutting or incremental innovations, which target low-income segments of the market. A case of Bangalore Autos Me studied out the effects of innovations on employment and labor productivity. Incremental nature of innovations cause employment growth but not productivity. Employees do not work
work effectively as they do not obtain benefits from sales of innovative products. Capital to labor ratio growth is twice lower than labor productivity growth. Neither of auto component producers have obtained any national or international patent, which gives little room for sustainability. Another example, clusters as a form of innovations are under-evaluated in terms of innovation development. Among 350 SMEs, uh, clusters, uh, around 190 have strong export potential. Reasons for low competitiveness are productivity, technology, and infrastructure issues faced by companies. So to sum up, let me uh, give you such information. Currently, uh, India has good legislation, good framework, and, uh, but directions of innovation uh, finances are a little bit um, uh, uh, confusing because it's mostly in military areas. So companies need to finance more, need to invest in uh, people, in human development and in creativity. Uh, we cannot say that innovation is only what can be done on, in a, on a firm-based level. Uh, it also uh, has a lot to be done in education. Uh, when uh, children start to uh, grow and start, uh, they are taught using creativity techniques. So they have more freedom to make choice and to uh, create something. Uh, also, employees have to have uh, more freedom to make decisions, to contribute more uh, in their working place. Uh, organizational structure should enable people to communicate freely, to remove barriers in communication, and not to afraid to take risks uh, when they uh, uh, come up with some innovative product. Uh, also, there is a huge requirement for uh, innovative, uh, for high educational institutions, universities, and programs. So, a lot of programs should be tailored to innovations but not only in terms of engineering and design and uh, what kind of product, uh, new product should be developed, but uh, it's a, ma a matter of uh, more psychological training, how innovators, how people with uh, unusual mindset, how they make changes. So we need all kind of specialists in all the areas to make companies successful in the 21st century and I wish you all the best, all the faculty, professors, and students uh, to try to think in more uh, in, uh, unusual way and in an innovative way. Think about uh, new paradigms uh, which uh, we can incorporate in our uh, daily routine, in our teaching, in our research. Uh, because only innovative companies uh, can survive, can make a country reach can make people satisfied and if uh, each uh, of us and uh, we feel satisfied we feel pleased we can deliver better services we can make more products we can make uh, better uh, provide better services especially in service oriented economies uh, most of uh, us involved in this process and we should take this responsibility to teach ourselves, to teach um, uh, um, others, and to share this valuable experience. I wish you um, uh, your conference success, and uh, I hope you will be growing, and uh, you, uh, you can um, uh, get together uh, more uh, and more people uh, which support uh, this idea and uh, uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you for invitation. It was a pleasure to uh, be in front of you and speak. Thank you so much. For your wishes and words of wisdom. You have focused on your speech, innovation and the marketing. I hope it will be helpful for many of us in future. Thank you once again, ma'am. We are very fortunate to have you here. 
Now I would like to tell you all about the Vishesh Shiksha Samman and Vishesh Seva Samman. The Vishesh Shiksha Samman and Vishesh Seva Samman that recognizes the academician, researchers, social workers who are aggressively and innovatively leveraging management challenges to make education, society, culture, business more proactive, productive and essential. To judge this, our distinguished panel compromises of various accommodation, researchers, social workers, entrepreneurs and renowned personalities from all the fragments of the society. This year, we have Vishesh Shiksha Samman, an outstanding contribution for higher education. This year, as per our juries, we were, who are in a precarious position to narrow down the winners, finally choose the following personalities. Dr. Casey Goel for outstanding contribution in higher education. Congratulations, sir. Dr. Dr. Casey Goel is a former Vice Chancellor and Registrar of University of Kota and currently serving as a Director at the Institute of International Business and Research, Pune. He was a Professor and Head in the Department of Commerce and Management at University of Kota, Rajasthan. Prior to this, Dr. Casey Goel started his career as a lecturer at District Toe in 1976, then become Vice Principal at Government College, Kota. He has held the indoor position of Dean in various departments of University at Kota. He has counsel at the University of Kota, Assessor's Team, National Accreditation and Assessment Council now. Bangalore, NSRC in Business Administration. He also holds the estimated position of member in selection panel of UPSC New Delhi and also renders his service in the various state public commissions. <coughs> Apart from the academic experience, Dr. Casey Cole has a rich experience in diverse fields such as counseling where he has counseled MBA students of IGNO. Dr. Casey Goel has a keen interest in research field which is testified by his well-earned PhD degree from the University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. Dr. Casey Goel also holds credit for a number of book publications as well as articles. Dr. Casey Goel has participated in a number of international and national seminars and conferences. Congratulations once again, sir. Now the Vishesh Seva Samman, which is in the memory of late Srimati Bhagwati Gautam Shahji, this year has been awarded to Mr. Pankaj Maru for outstanding contribution in the field of social services. Congratulations, Mr. Pankaj Maru. <laughs> Dr. Maru is currently the founder and chief functionary Nata Zenith Social Welfare Society. Working for the welfare of people with intellectual disabilities and running rehabilitation center for people with intellectual disabilities. He is an engineering graduate from DAV and management graduate from MDU Rohtak and PJ diploma in community-based rehabilitation from Bangalore University. He is currently a chairman of Global Academy, an educational institution, partner of Valence Farm LLP, A2 Milk Producing Company, Director of Sharda Vidya Food International Private Limited, Milk Products Manufacturing and Trading Venture. Mr. Maru is also a recipient of National Award by President of India for the work in the field of disability. <coughs> Serving as an expert member in Central Advisory Board, the Apex Body of Disability Division, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India. He is member of General Council and Executive Committee of Rehabilitation Council of India, a statutory body of Government of India. He is also member of NGO Screening Committee of Disability Division of Government of India. National Coordinator for the Nirmay Health Insurance Scheme of Government of India. 
He visited various countries of the world, including Singapore, Hong Kong, UAE, Mauritius, Sri Lanka, Mauritius, Malaysia, Thailand, and many more for his social services. Mr. Maru also provided the voluntary services in the most prestigious and biggest special needs center of Dubai, namely Al Noor Center for the Friendly Able Children. Congratulations, Dr. Pankaj Maru, sir. Now I request Dr. K.C. Goel, sir, to kindly come and receive the Vishish Shritcha Samman from the stage. Welcome, sir.
because I was a member of a drafting committee of a bill which is a Right of Person with Disability Act 2016, which is in place in the country now. Now, as far as now, there are 21 types of disabilities in this country, and the number of disabled in this country is 7 crore. And to serve this equal, we need more than 2 million qualified people. And what is the number is of today as far as Rehabilitation Council of India is concerned, that is only 1.5 months. There is a shortfall of 18.5 lakhs qualified people in this sector. So I request all of you to please think upon that. There is a lot of scope in the country. There are a lot of changes going on. Please come forward to this sector. Once again, thank you very much. Jai Jai. Thank you so much, sir. You are already an inspiration for many of us to be indulged in the society and society works. Now I would like to call Dr. Casey Gold, sir, to express his views. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Spamaji, for conferring this award to me. Honorable Professor Narendra Dhakar, Vice Chancellor, DAV, DAV University, Indore. Professor Dave, oh, sorry, Mr. Dave, Mr. Naran, <laughs> guest of honor, Dr. Dr. Hana and my friend, Dr. Anasisba, dignitaries in the hall, and my dear students. Although in the career of 40 years or more, I have received a number of awards, honors, Evolves. But this award conferred upon me by the Mrs. Family carries a very special importance in my life. This is sort of a lifetime achievement award for me and for that I express my sincere thanks to the Mrs. Family and management of this institute. In fact, in last few years, many changes have taken place in global business practices and socio-economic development. And this is Institute of Professional Studies and Research or Visit School of Management is doing a very great job for organizing international conference on this very relevant and updated topic. And this is seventh one in the series. So this is actually a remarkable field in the life of any educational institute. Many changes are taking place in global business practices, like you may say that role of social media has increased in the business. If you are visible in the social media, then you will survive other, otherwise, your survival becomes very difficult in this present age. Second thing is that this is actually the age of what is called as the digital marketing. You have to adopt the digital marketing practices. Then the role of sustainable development. Now we are talking of the sustainable development is increasing in the business. 
you might be knowing that Ed Kington has developed the three-piece theory that is planet, people, and profit. And every business for his survival has to follow this three-piece theory. Similarly, corporate, we are now talking of the corporate governance in the business. And in this age of globalization, actually, whole globe has become a small village. And therefore, if any crisis arises, occurs in any part of the globe, then it impacts the whole world. Examples are before us, like just before Turkey crisis arose, and by which the whole world was impacted. So we will have to take these facts into the consideration. I, I was going through the souvenir prepared by the Vicist School of Management on this occasion. And I came across that more than 200 research papers are to be presented in this seventh international conference. I hope that academics from not all over India, but also from the other parts of the country will deliberate upon this issue and they will throw the no light, a new light on the paradigm shift in the global business practices and the socio-economic development. I again thanks to the Visist family, management of the Visist School of Management and particularly to, do, to Dr. Nana Sikbar, who has invited me, who has called me, and who have selected my name for this prestigious award. I will cherish it forever in my memory. Thank you once again.